Hi, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. In this video, I'll um, explain you how to program this swinging monkey. Making it swing has been a, a long, lifelong project of mine. I've wanted to do it ever since I had my first NXT robot and I could never figure it out. And finally, I figured it out. And by this time, um, Spike Prime is on the market. Um, the building instructions for this monkey are on my Patreon site. You can find the link in the top right corner here. And, uh, and the same link, you'll also find a full program. So you can just build it, download it and run and have a full swinging monkey in no time. Okay, let's get to it. Um, let's first attach the monkey here to the table. No nails involved, it's just um, Lego. In the building instructions, um, it's very clear how to do it. And there we have the monkey is up there and able to swing. But what we want to do now is um, make it swing by itself. So let's connect um, it here to the Mac. For the swinging monkey to work, we should be able to detect when we change direction. And um, I can open this um, inspection board here. What you see is that the roll angle, um, the last number, is corresponding with the position of the monkey. And when it's down and still, it's about 90. When it's up here, it's about 180. And when it's all the way back there, it goes to zero and even minus some number. The problem here is that um, when it goes up real high, the monkey, um, it goes from 180 and then all of a sudden it snaps back to minus 180, um, which is a programming challenge if you want to, to swing the monkey up real high. Um, in my full program, I programmed around it. We won't do that in this video, but again, you can go to my uh, Patreon site and download the, the full program so you can see how I hacked around this limitation where the um, um, number, the roll number switches from 180 to minus 180 and makes it real hard to um, detect the end of the swing. For now, we'll just work with this number um, floating around 90. What we'll do is um, we'll make a loop of course and in this loop we will check the roll angle and compare it again to itself and see if it has grown or shrunk. So for this we need a variable, make a new variable, I'll call it last roll. And the first thing we're going to do is put last roll, um, put the roll angle into the last roll, okay, then we're going to read the roll angle again and wait until the last roll angle let's see here okay so we're going to read this number again and check if by the time we enter this step if it has become larger than our variable if it hasn't duplicate this oh not the whole stack just this one we'll just read it again and then compare it again read it again compare it again and at some point um, the 
the roll angle will have stopped decreasing and will have started increasing and we will be exiting this loop. This is the moment where we could do a little beep. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll do the same for the other direction. Let's take a different note here. And of course, here we want to switch around um, the angle and the variable because this time we want to see if um, the new roll angle is, has become smaller and so reach the other side of the cycle. Let's see what this does. Okay. So we get a nice beep, two different beeps at every end of the cycle. What's funny about um, this pendulum, because it's actually a pendulum, is that um, you can hear it from the beeps. The time between the beeps is the same for a big swing. The rhythm is exactly the same and for a small amplitude. So irrespective of the amplitude, the rhythm is the same. And even better, um, it's also uh, irrespective of the mass of the monkey. So I'll get some extra weights and you can see that um, here, okay. I'll get some extra weights and I'll and you can see that the rhythm stays exactly the same. We can also measure it. Let's first program it uh, to measure the, um, the period here. So what we'll do is um, use a timer. We're going to reset the timer here at the beginning of the program and make a new variable call it half period because the full period is swinging back and forth but the half period is like just one swing and then we will store the time into the half period okay and then reset the timer and go back to the other side um, and duplicate this. Oh, trash that. Store it. Okay, um, we should actually reset the timer right after storing it. This will look better. Zoom out a little. Okay, now we can see what the period is on screen. So it's about 0.6 seconds with some measuring imperfections there from the from the hub. Let's see what happens if we add some weight now. Okay, there we go, adding some dead weights. I'm going to add it in the middle of the monkey, hopefully, because if we move the, the center of mass up and down, the period will change. Um, so if you make the pendulum longer or shorter, the period will change. So let's see what this program does. And again, you can see that it's about 0.6 seconds, the period, and I added quite a lot of mass here uh, to the monkey. So 
So that's a very interesting property of a pendulum. Oh, let's stop you. Okay, let's remove that again. Now we have been able to detect the ends of the swing. Now our challenge is to move the body up in the deepest point of the swing because that's what actually actuates a pendulum. If we um, move the center of mass up while it's going very fast, we will be adding energy. And here, when at the end of the swing, when it's down, we can just extend again because it's um, still and we can move what we want. We won't be adding much energy. So our challenge here is to time the movement of the uh, body curling up or curling back um, with the swing here um, that we have detected. So we are already halfway in our program here. Let's just um, make sure that uh, the body moves. So let's uh, start the program by resetting all motors. Um, set their speed down a bit. About 60% will be enough. And then um, what I'm going to do is um, make a new event where I'll make a new message here. Um, body forward. And then we'll wait about half a period. Which we've seen it's about 0.6 seconds. So we wait about half that. And then we will move the body back down. So let's make a new message here. Body backward, no, body down. Okay. Um, okay. We'll do the same for the other side. This time we want to make the body move backwards. Wait a little bit and make the body move down. I'll zoom out a little bit again and to check if our program work we'll um, keep the same two beeps but um, trigger them with this event hat body backwards and body forwards Okay, so we have the same beeps again. We're still able to sound of the beep, but this time we're dispatching an event. And now our only cha uh, challenge left is to um, make the motors move to curl up uh, the body. 
I'll just uh, quickly program that. This is a lot of work, probably, but um, the full program is up there on Patreon, and um, you can download it for if you're a dollar, five dollar subscriber and up. Okay, so now all the motor positions are programmed for body forward and body backwards. Let's uh, try our new program here. And there we are. The monkey starts to swing. Now, this swinging monkey has some funny properties. Um, we, you've seen that um, it swings it legs, its legs forward when it's uh, moving forward, but we can turn it around and it will swing just the same. So let's um, switch around forward and backward. The only thing is um, when you change the movement, it will not be able to start up by itself. So we have to give it a little push, but still it will be moving its CG up in the middle of the swing. And so it will be accelerating or adding energy to the swing, even when making the inverse movement. So the only problem here is that the monkey isn't able to start with this uh, switched around version of the program. For this, we need to um, move the body in the other way. And there is another funny property of the swinging property. When I um, put the body down in the middle of the swing and move the CG up at the end of the swing, you will see that um, the monkey starts to break. Down and forward. So, you can see that it's very effective at taking out the energy out of the pendulum this way. The time in which it stops swinging is really short. So compare this active dampening of the swing with just no dampening and you can see that if it isn't actively dampening the swing goes on for a much longer time this concludes my video about the swinging monkey i hope you liked it um, please uh, support me on Patreon, the link is up there, you will get building instructions and the full program. And I wonder if you will be able, like me, by uh, tweaking the parameters to make the monkey hit the table and maybe even go full round. That would be awesome. I'm looking forward to your posts and videos. See you later, bye bye.